Hey guys, what are you guys doing? What's going on? So you know today I actually was gonna do the chat from my living room. You guys know the living room with the greenery and the scenery and all the things. But I was like, I put on this polka dot shirt that someone got me for my birthday. So I found that phone. And I was like, ooh, why don't I just go in my room with my new wallpaper so I can show you girls and squirrels the things of the twirls. Listen, we're gonna get into the things of the things today. I'm so excited. To be, to be blessed with this opportunity to talk to these ATM pioneers that we have today. That is April and Mercedes from Cycle 2 of America's Next Top Model. Are you guys having fun today? Like, what's going on? You guys enjoying your world? What's going on there in the world? Thank you, everybody who wished me happy birthday. That meant a lot. Um, I'm looking down in these comments. Can you guys hear me clearly? Can you guys see me clearly? So listen, I have a couple of classroom announcements before we begin. I have some good news and I have some bad news. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you the bad news first. Remember, I've always told y'all if there was a glitch, I don't even want to look at the comments right now because I don't want to hear y'all mouths. I already know, I already know, but please, I've already... Um, concocted a way to make it up to you. Okay, here it goes. So listen, I've always told y'all if something bad goes wrong, I will always tell you. All right, long story short, as y'all know, since you guys have made me so popular on Instagram now, you guys, it's your fault. You guys know I am a creator now on Instagram. And Instagram has these rules now that are very strict, I'm learning. And if you are considered one of their creators then you have to abide by these rules. So there was a certain word said in my chat with um, Giselle from Cycle One that when I went to go look at it, Instagram told me they had to take it down because of the word and it violates their creator rules. So unfortunately, unfortunately, that live is somewhere in the abyss. Now, look, I have appealed it. I've typed them a long, long, heartfelt message to get it back. Hopefully, I can get it back. But listen, it taught me a big lesson, guys, because I felt so bad that I had to come tell you this, that you guys have blessed me with an amazing opportunity to talk to, like, top model things, top model producers, top model hosts, top model contestants, and I need to do this whole thing a lot more serious. So... We're going to elevate this show to a nice place. We're going to start doing a whole lot more because, like, it's a thing now. You guys have made it a thing. You guys enjoy it. And so I need to do the things and the things to make sure you can continue to get the things and the things. But with that with that being said, excuse me, I do have a surprise for you guys today. The two people come on, coming on today don't even know about the surprise because I wanted to make it up to you. So without further ado, me yapping and all those things, I'm going to bring on two beautiful women that I'm so excited. I am blessed. I am all the things, other things to talk to these two. Of course, you know them from America's Next Top Model, but since then they've done amazing shenanigans and flanagans around the world. Um, and they are still friends to this day, talking about top models. So without further ado, these two beautiful ladies. Hi. Hi. Hi, April and Mercedes, how are you? Good. So good to virtually meet you and happy belated birthday, love. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm on the edge of my seat about what this surprise is. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, my mind is running wild. I have no idea. Yes. You don't at all. No. And I hate surprises, so. She, I surprised Mercedes on her birthday, and it was, she came around. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a tricky one for us girls. Well, I'm that's like, a good is thing. It, is it, I, I don't know. I'm like, are you bringing in another girl? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Only time she'll tell and we're less than an hour out. So all yeah. that we have to do is just sit here and just wait and see what's going to happen. Tyra may pop up. Now that would gag the girls. That, that, that would be like, that would be insane. Yeah. Now, if I could have done that, I think I would automatically get into heaven. I strongly believe it automatically. <laughs> You're going to go to heaven no matter what. It's all Yay, right. because Mercedes told me so. Uh -huh. She so is part psychic. Really? A little bit. Like, passively or like, this is something that you like, I do this for real, for real. Oh, no. I don't do, I don't get paid for it at all. Yeah. It's just but, intuition. Everyone has it. Everyone mm -hmm. has the ability. It's just about turning it on. 
that discernment bone in you. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because I'm like, hey, can you read me right now? But I got you. I got you. So listen, of course, you girls know I've been doing top model chats for a long time now. And I'm pretty sure my friends out here have spammed your comments and DMs enough <laughs> asking you to come over here to my world and come talk about the things of the things. And you girls are here. And we are here to talk about cycle two. Now, listen, and I want to hear you girls talk about this to everyone who may not know, because you guys have started your own podcast, which made me not really want to get into the normal. <laughs> Throwback Thursday time. Shout Cheers. Out. Cheers. <laughs> which I love made to have me... you drink, Oliver, because we always have drinks on our show as well. So. And it's so cool. Wait, Mercedes, bring yours back. Coming back. It's so cool that they all kind of have like a little... Yeah. There's like a little color scheme going on right now with this red accent and it's black and white and muted behind it. It's nice. I'm loving it. I'm living. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, this is, I'm drinking with Mercedes in April. This is so neat. <laughs> it's a Friday. Come on. It yes. is. Yeah. And thank you so much for having us on. Um, I am a huge fan of yours. Um, I think what you do is great. And uh, especially for Valentine's Day weekend, we all need to put love out there. Um, we need it more than ever. Mm -hmm. So thanks for showing these OG gangster top models some love. We yeah. really appreciate it. Oh, no, that is so dope. Listen, as I've always said when I've done these and what originally encouraged me to do these, because I love this freaking show. It is my second favorite show of all time, because as the kids have heard me say, Charmed will always be number one. Always. <laughs> Nothing is beating Char Charmed. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite sister? Oh, my God. Um, I always liked Phoebe. She was sweet, you know, cute. I know. I know what's her face is uh, Alyssa Milano's more exciting but um my favorite was piper piper is like forever og in my brain she's amazing that's what that's who i met oh yeah yes. piper um yeah. marie holly combs but anyways this show has like really been a part of my life and people have heard me say this story before when i was younger it was gay didn't have identity was scared all these other things top model was my safe haven like so many other people who have watched and still watch it it's still to this day, excuse me it's a safe haven for people like me and like me like-minded people like me to relate to something have something out there in the world that feels like it's for them so to do these make me very excited like it's an honor an honor an honor an honor and thank you guys again thank, thank you. you i i think what you it's like what your love for it is the same as me and mercedes and the whole reason we wanted to start kind of a show surrounding our experience too, is that it brings people together. And whenever we run into people who've seen it, they're like, mm -hmm. they go back to that point in their lives where they used to watch. Like when mm -hmm. you were saying you watched when you were a little kid and that's the best part is the memories of when you used to watch and it's just bringing all those people together. It's a cool, it's like OG retro style reality TV. And that's the best thing that happened to us is just like seeing that and connecting with those people. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I did not want to step on your toes and, you know, for lack of better terms, because you guys have already done chats. You guys have your own thing over there that you guys were doing. And so I thought, well, why don't I just pluck out, like, the most extreme questions from the comments? And, of course, we've gotten some Cycle 2 tea from Shandy, and I've also talked to Yoana, and a lot of people still have questions about the things they've heard from them. So that's what we're going to get into today. Let's do it. Okay. I have my black phone here that I have not replaced since dropping it. Um, but here we go. So I'm just going to start off with what they love, which is called Antium Roll Call. This is when I say every name of the girls casted on your cycle, and you guys tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. <laughs> Are okay. you ready? I... Okay. Ready? First one on the list is Anna. Anna, Who? Anna's, Anna's. Anna Bradfield. Mm -hmm. I'll let Mercedes go first. <laughs> um, my answer is who? Oh, okay. Uh, my answer is mama. Okay. Feel free to add more words if you <laughs> if you want to. Feel free. Sweet okay. Southern mama. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very sweet. Gotcha. Um, second on the list is Bethany. Uh, loud. She was very loud, <laughs> uh, like all the time. <laughs> uh, fiery, feisty, curvy. Okay, Heather. 
Mm, sweet, but lost. Sensitive. And I'm sorry, but I just remember this girl ate so many pickles. So I'm just like sensitive and pickles. Do you remember I that? I can't even remember that. <laughs> she was on like a pickle diet, I think. But they pickles really... have like zero calories in them, right? Exactly. Like zero. So she was eating a lot of pickles. That's what I remember about Heather. Sweet and pickles. You know what I just thought about? I, I'm thinking cycle two is very iconic. Like, you know, it's up there in like the more preferred cycles and top model. Dang it. God, I'm so sorry I'm saying this. It is so shady. I don't remember the first few girls. The first two who got eliminated? No, like the first, like, I mean, like, I know they were there. I know they were there, but like, when you say cycle two, of course you say all the names that come with the names of the things of the things. Yeah. I don't remember them. I have a weird, like, crazy memory. So I, I, we, I don't think Mercedes and I, either of us have even, Bible, have not watched our season since it aired. But I remember everything about every girl. Anna was a young mom. Mm -hmm. I think she was married to a professional football player. She lived in the South. Wow. She did a little did bit of- Did you produce this show? <laughs> I, just, I just remember- I remember. Tell us. I, got, I have like a crazy, I don't know, phot photographic, I guess, memory. Mm -hmm. um, she had done local modeling in her area. She was on the verge of plus or not. And her, the big issue was that she refused to do the nude photo shoot because right. she was religious to an extent mm -hmm. and felt that- oh. Only her husband should see mm -hmm. those parts of her body. And Nigel uh, asked her to leave the set, and she was eliminated for it. Yikes. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, her face is like beauty campaign, too. I would have loved to see her progress. I do remember her face being extremely beautiful. And I was like, well, dang it, lady. I mean... You know, sometimes when people do reality TV shows, especially ones that have established brands, it's like, girl, you already know what you're coming here to do, or what could possibly happen. Like, that's like the girls who go on drag, do you girls watch Drag Race? Yes. yes. <laughs> that's like the girls going on Drag Race saying, oh, I didn't know I had to prepare for Snatch Game, or. But that, yeah, but that makes sense now. You have to think, mm -hmm. we were on before Instagram. Yeah. Gotcha, no, I, okay, I got you. I got yeah. you. Or she, she may not have even seen the first cycle. Like, truthfully, I, I don't know, I had you, Mercedes, I had not watched the first season of Top Model when I went on. Yeah. You I'm, couldn't download stuff online if you yeah. missed it when it I Sorry, just trying to get into the chat. But I get it, I get it. But I mean, isn't like nude modeling something that comes with just the, the world of you potentially having to pose more nude than normal? I think that when starting modeling, like I've always been in the fashion industry and fascinated with it. Um, yes, being comfortable with your body is a big thing as a model. You're constantly changing, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, it was like, didn't you know that? <laughs> but a lot of girls didn't. And that's what mm -hmm. made America's Next Top Model beautiful because it was like exposing what the modeling industry was at the time. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and that said, I, I don't know about you, Mercedes, but every time I've signed with a new modeling agency, one of the first sheets they make you fill out is, will you do nudity? Will you do fur? Will you do cigarettes? And so I agree that it's better if you are comfortable with your body, but it's certainly something you are allowed to say, no, this is what I will and will not do. That makes yeah. sense. Thank you for a little nugget right there, April. I didn't know that, that's cool. <laughs> like a little questionnaire or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah huh. exactly. Okay, next girl is Janasha. Hilarious, funny, like would be a great host. Mm -hmm. For her, I just always go SNL. It was my dream to watch her host SNL. I wanted her to get on it. Um, improv, comedy, mm -hmm. uh, honest. Okay. Zia Mora. Mm. Strong, fierce, New Yorker. Ah. <laughs> Edgy. Vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, she was one of my bunk mates, so I did get to know her pretty well. And she, she had that exterior edginess, but deep underneath all of it, she was a very sensitive girl. Now, let me ask you ladies this, because I don't think Zia Moore gets the things of the things that she deserves. Zia Moore was very unique. She was very striking. And 
as a fan watching it, my interpretation of Zia Moore's time on Top Models was she had all the goods, she just didn't know what to do with them yet. I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was a huge competitor. Mm -hmm. I just think that her cards weren't dealt correctly. Um, I loved her shoot. I loved her Grace Jones shoot. That was like one of my favorite shoots out yes. of all of them. I think she was really fierce. I don't I just think I don't know. She, you know, just didn't work out. Yeah. Next girl on the list is Katie. Katie, 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 Katie. <laughs> Uh, sweet hometown, like deer in headlights, mm -hmm. uh, really long legs and abnormally short feet. Her, her shoe size was like a five and she was, was five, nine crazy. And she tripped all the time because like ergonomically it doesn't work. <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a different route with Katie. What I saw was kind of like Ciamara. The, the, what she put out was sweet, innocent, naive. I think that was all a front and that she was actually a very savvy, strong, driven young girl. Really? Like deep, deep in the core. She, I think she yeah. was much stronger than she, than she let on or maybe than even she was portrayed. Right. Yeah. So, I thought these were first impressions, though. No, this that is good stuff. This is good, okay. this is good stuff. No, no, no. Let the fodder fodder. But, okay, so, because Katie, historically, on, on Cycle 2 of Top Model, presents herself as, you know, she's crying all the time. She's complaining. You know, whether that's her or just the edit. But I'm curious to know from you, April, what were your experiences with her that makes you say this now? Right. So... First of all, to answer your question, I do think it was her and it was mm -hmm. an edit. Mm -hmm. But my personal experience from her right from the get-go was she had a little fire in her. Like she, my experience of her was not this like blow over innocent mm -hmm. little wallflower. She, she, I remember we were in the limo, Mercedes, and we were all going around kind of saying our deal. And I don't know if you remember, but in that moment, she was like, I moved, you know, I moved to LA to pursue my dreams of modeling because I'm 18 and this is what I want to do. And and she was kind of like aggressive about it. And um, and then her story sort of shifted to being this really sensitive girl. But that moment in that limo when she said why she was here, that's the version of her that landed with me and that was mm. my experience of her. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like that was her through and through. Yeah. Like she smoked cigarettes, remember? Mm -hmm. and, and we were like, she did everything she could to hide it. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not judging that. I'm just saying yeah. it was like, there was the, the what she presented right. and also what they edited. And then there was just the real her. And I think the real her was actually quite a driven, grounded, mm -hmm. like. She was bird. a hustler. A hustler, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What about Sarah? So now, now I know we're going more in depth. It's not just what you we thought in the beginning. When we of saw course, her. of course. I'm sorry, but of course, yes. Once we get to talk, you, they know. Once I get talking about something and it's really passionate, I'm like, yes, I'm yes, we're here. So, yes, you can talk about it a little bit more. Um, Sarah. April. Oh, you want me to go? <laughs> sorry, you've been going first, Sarah. <laughs> first impressions, and I remember I said this to production, I was most blown away by her beauty. I, I had never Everyone been says. just like stunning, mm -hmm. oh, like, like heart stopping beauty. Um, sensitive and, and she had a lot of pain about her father. So mm -hmm. my big words for her are, were beautiful, sensitive but then to go deeper over that like feisty like Res you don't you don't want to mess with sarah on the basketball court or in an alley kind of girl like she had that street to her mm -hmm. that i think sometimes came through um but that's kind of like my full picture of her 
Yeah, Ms. I would. Ms. I would agree. She's very sexy. I was like, oh, for sure, she's gonna win. She's like Victoria's Secret. Uh -huh. like, you know, like when I saw her with the boobs and the you know chiseled face, and it was like, yeah. oh, she's gorgeous. She's gonna win. I thought she was bite. But then um, we actually were friends right after Top Model and kind of drifted apart. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I would agree with what April said. Right. So take it. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, right, Mercedes? Like you would want to get in a bar fight with Sarah. Like you. Like, I mean, or you? Okay, Jersey. maybe you would. Yeah. <laughs> like she had a street toughness to her, as well as a sensitivity. Is what I would say about her. Like she's not a pushover. Gotcha. Now, Mercedes, you're a thumper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Way back in the day. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes. What do you know? That? I grew a up thumper. in inner city, New Jersey. You know until I was like 16 and then I moved to California and mm. thank God I did. It's, I lived two different lives, put it that way. I can't imagine you doing anything of the sorts. Oh, I know. That's the beauty of it. Don't trust I me. Don't trust me. <laughs> She'd be my first call in a bar fight. I told me. <laughs> be like, get over here. So let's go back to the day that her and Yolanda were in the bottom two for um the, was it Hold on, guys. I'm not rewriting history, am I? No, it was her and you wanted the bottom for the Shake Your Body music video. And everyone's crying, and it's all these things and these things. From what I'm gathering from hearing everyone talk about this one particular episode, no one really knew who was going to go home because everyone was kind of shocked to see the bottom two were them. Do you girls remember what was going on in your head seeing Yoana, who was eventually the winner, um, but had showed promise, of course, that she could potentially win during that time, and Sarah, who was so beautiful, and also show a promise, like what was going on through your heads? I do. Well, for me, it was crazy. Cause I was like, I always thought, oh, Joanna is like beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know, she seemed really rich, came from a nice background, knew about the fashion industry and Sarah was gorgeous. And um, I don't know. I think Tyra just ended up eliminating Sarah at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we were like, oh, it's anyone's game after this mm -hmm. point. Because <laughs> we thought, I mean, in my head, I thought they were the two strongest competitors. Sorry, April. I, I thought you were great, too. But <laughs> at the time in my head, you know, my little head. And mm -hmm. especially because ethnic women weren't like the rage. Like Tyra was the only person I knew at that time that was just bringing ethnic women in and you know, all you saw was like these white women or these really exotic women like Adriana Lima in Victoria's Secret. Right, That's right. what was the standard thing you saw. April? I remember that elimination very clearly and I've I've seen comments about it too. And so mm -hmm. I'm so glad to actually get to talk about it. It was one of these hyper emotional eliminations. Like mm -hmm. when she went home, I think all of us fell into tears way more intensely than we ever did before or ever did again. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say it, it was because that was the point in living together that we all had really started to become very close. Like remember Mercedes, mm -hmm. uh, Sarah had just had a birthday yeah, and we went and got a cake and that's we right. Were, we were all really becoming very close friends and they don't like to show that because they, they like to show the, the photo shoots the and, drama. The and the drama and the fights mm -hmm. at that point, And I'm not saying this is how things still are, but I think Mercedes and me and Sarah and, and even Joanna um, and Shandy were, we're all very, very good friends. And mm -hmm. to see her go home, it wasn't just the elimination. It was like having your friend that you were living with ripped right. away from you. And you never know when you're going to see them again. And it was traumatic and it was sad. And that's what I remember about that night. Just thank God for you, April, because I don't remember <laughs> any of this shit. I was just trying to get through every every episode. You you've got mama brain. You have an excuse. No, I don't have mama brain. It's okay. just like I don't remember those okay. details because it's just like, how do I get to the next round? You know, I have mm -hmm. crazy, crazy yeah. recall. But yeah, it was it was really about that. It was about our friend suddenly leaving and we don't get to say goodbye. And mm -hmm. we don't know when we're going to see her again. And that was really sad. And that's what I remember. Gotcha. Gotcha. Listen, guys, while I'm about to ask my next question, the boyfriend is in here, guys, adjusting my lights because they are burning my eyes right now. I don't know if, if it looks like I'm like in a constant 
smizing thing right now, but these light, that light is killing me. But my next question is, looking back on it, and I mean, a lot of people, yeah, thank you, baby. A lot of people deem it unfair that she went home on this week and the challenge was a music video in a particular Tyra's song that, of course, I'll be honest, many people laughed at and threw it underneath the rug and whatnot. <laughs> um, do you think, like... Her performance in that video should have been what was used to eliminate her. Who wait? Who went home that week? Sarah. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. First of all, I this is what I remember. I remember thinking, "Oh man, this is shameless promotion on Tyra's part. Like, why are we doing her video?" And I was like, "Is she like gonna try to be this star?" And um. You know, it was fun to to do it, but I just was thinking at the the time, like this is this is dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, Sarah, I think Sarah worked it in that video. It was a shame, you know. But maybe she wasn't on the top list of Sephora's contract, so maybe that's why she went home. Yeah, I I think it has way more to do with, especially that week in particular. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they've made up their minds. They decided these are the girls that are going to Italy. And if Sarah is not on that list, then this is the week she's got to get cut. And there, in my opinion, there is literally nothing she could have done in that music video that would have changed that. We could have all fallen on our asses and she could have done like a full split and she would have been sent home. Like, yeah, I mean, honestly, her video was super sexy. That would have sold on BET at the time. You yeah. know? True. Yeah. So she True. was just they'd already decided here's who's going to Italy. And, and, you know, that's, I think that's how most of the decisions are made. Okay. Okay. We're going to get into a little bit later, your thoughts on production and the editing. Of course, you girls have spilled some major, major, major tea about some behind the scenes things that you girls uncover, but we'll get into a little bit more later. Um, the next one on the list is Camille, the icon living Camille McDonald. <laughs> April, <laughs> I get to, all right, I'll be honest. I thought she was mean. Yeah, it's okay, I, I mean. And know. I say I say mean, not the B word. Uh -huh. Because to me, there's a difference. Um, I felt I, I had nothing but positivity to give her. And I felt like, and you didn't see any of this on the show, to be honest, so it probably sounds irrelevant, but she threw me unnecessary shade. And so to me, that's mean. So my impression of her was that she she was a mean girl and uh, very self, self-serving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think she was extra, a little bit of extra mm -hmm. with her signature walk and all that. And, um, you know, she was confident, but overconfident and not serving others, like in a way of, it, it didn't need, it didn't, like we were all cool, you know, mm -hmm. and then she added into the mix and it was just like that, the energy was just really like not cool. It, it didn't vibe with us at mm -hmm. all at, with any of the girls. And we're like, was, oh, okay, she's going to be the mean girl in the house. That's what she just decided in her head to be. But yeah, um, she was never mean to me personally. And mm -hmm. I felt like maybe she had pain inside. Um, I don't know her on a personal level, but I just have met many of those type of girls. And mm -hmm. I just feel for her because... You know, it sucks to be have that name after years and years. And, you know, we're all young and we all have insecurities and we deal with it differently. And mm -hmm. maybe some people are more overly confident to compensate for that. And it's a shame because I bet she was great, you know. Now, I'm going to ask you girls something. I don't think a lot of people ask about Camille. Can you girls tell me one thing that you absolutely loved or liked or respected about Camille? I loved her hair. I remember like always <laughs> looking at her hair. The I makeover? She had great hair because I can never pull off braids. The mm -hmm. oh, the hair she had before the makeover. Yeah, I got it. Oh. <laughs> so, what I love about Camille, to be honest, is her freaking ridiculous confidence. Mm -hmm. Like I, mom was confident. 
I'm not mad at it. I'm just, I wish I could take some of what she's got and infuse it into my, my day. Like there's something about that. Of course, you know, when it tips over into something else, it's, mm -hmm. it can't be, you know, good all the time, but she had a great body too. She had oh, like she great boobs and yeah. great ass and she was I'm, thin and wonderful legs. Like, perfect what you think of perfect model yeah. mm -hmm. she just she was her number one like cheerleader and i and i said <laughs> yeah but like i do applaud that i applaud someone with the balls to just like just totally believe in themselves and not mm -hmm. be afraid to tell the world about it i i do kind of love that about her you like her unapologetic yes point of view unapologetic confidence that she was, and I'm pretty sure that she still is to this day. You know, I've tried oh, yeah. to reach out to her, but I think, you know, I know some top model girls are like, ah, I don't want to talk about that stuff no more. Like, you know, it's in the past, so. We've like, oh. tried to reach out to her too. Don't worry, you're not the only one. Yeah. Oh. So Camille McDonald, if you are hearing this, please reach out to Oliver and throw yeah. back Thursday time because we would love to just get a real story on you. Know? <laughs> we're, not mad. we're not mad at you. We're not mad. Not mad. We just want to understand and yeah. we and want to hear what, your side. Here's what I guarantee. Mm -hmm. I guarantee this is what I know about her. She has not changed. I, if we sat down with her Mercedes, it would probably be like jumping in a time portal back to 2003. I don't know. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Like it's been a long time. It's Maybe been a long time. Maybe I don't mean in a bad know. way. I, I bet I just mean I guarantee she walks into Starbucks and orders her, you know, cappuccino <laughs> the same <laughs> the same confident like she's probably like, What's your name, miss? And she's like supermodel. Like she to me, that part of her, I would almost be sad. It's still present. Change. But like I see her with like Cause you know, I stalk her every now and then. Like she posts her man. Like she seems like she's like, you know, a good man will calm you down. <laughs> a good man will calm you down. So she may be like, you know, relax. Mercedes, why are you looking like that? It's your truth. A oh. good man will, a good man will put out of night. Hey, mm -mm. hey, we on YouTube. I already messed up with I one Instagram live. I'm that not gonna do it on this your one. Life that you're talking about? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said, is that the good man you're talking about is the guy that's fixing your light right now? Well, definitely for me, but I'm saying she has a man that I often see her post on her social media. So maybe the man has changed the Camille that we know of yesterday. She may be like a more relaxed, zinned out Camille. I hope well, not. I, we will, I, I, we I, will I, never know until she reaches yeah. out. I want her to be the same. No, I don't want her to be mean to me, but I, all the other stuff, I, I kind of hope she hasn't lost, you know? Next on the list is Shandy. I talked to Shandy, one of my favorite chats. We one love Shandy. Yes. You, you want we, me to we go? We caught up with her on Throwback Thursday time. We yes. were like, Shandy! Mm -hmm. You know, she was always sweet from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously had rough beginnings. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, she wanted to be there. She applied for the show. And... I think it wasn't until her like almost second to last photo shoot where she had the flower in her hair. I was like, oh shit, this girl got potential. Like I was mm -hmm. like, she's beautiful. Um, and it wasn't the makeup. It was just the more confidence that she got um, along the way. And I mean, I love Shandy. I can't say more about her. I uh, yeah. It's April. Shandy and I were actually really close on the show. We mm -hmm. we kind of had in common like the lack of experience in heels and makeup and all that. So we bonded. Mm -hmm. To me, she is soulful, honest. Mm -hmm. And tough. Okay. Yeah. Did you girls get yes. a chance? Wait, go oh, ahead. Go okay, ahead, so go ahead. something that you guys had never seen before is we had a boxing round on Top Model. It was never, I don't think it was ever aired. Was it aired, April? No, I yeah, do they my fast checking. They, okay, yes, but they then did it air the real story, which was we had to fight each other, and uh, Shandy and I were the ones that were at the end in the mm -hmm. finale. And um, I'm like, I'm gonna win. I'm from Jersey. I've done mm -hmm. this, you know, like not being proud about it, but that's right, right. like my past and my history. And Shandy 
ended up kicking my ass. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh -huh. And she is so strong. And that was something that they didn't, I don't think they aired that. You're right the about boxing. They did not air, you're right. They didn't air the one-on-one -on -one matches. They just aired the last man standing when it was me and Camille. And then I did win that one, but that wasn't a fight. It was a- But that wasn't the real story. The real story was that it was me and Shandy in the end. We were the two contenders. I know. They never I, aired that. I weirdly don't remember that. I'm they never aired it because they were like, "Oh, poor sick girl." For my story, you know, like it uh, wouldn't have it wouldn't have made sense. Okay. But Shandy and I. Oh my God! Now thinking about it, which I don't remember, and like, thank God April's here. But it was Shandy and I boxing mm -hmm. in the end, and Shandy ended up winning, and it was just a testament to how strong she was. Shandy beat you up. She did. She kicked my ass. <laughs> we we went to that place like three different times, so that mm -hmm. must have been a time that they just didn't show anything of when we went there. Um, that's so funny. That's the one thing I don't remember. For Wait, what do you mean three different times? We went back there a few times. We went once to get weighed and measured and all right. of that. Mm -hmm. and then but we then we back. had an actual fight, and that was the whole that was the Let's whole progression of the thing. Yeah, yeah. And then we went back another time. Like, we went there twice, basically. I learned a lot about boxing. You get yeah. points for here and here. <laughs> yeah. I actually went back there after the show wrapped when I was living in New York to train with that guy. <laughs> oh, cool. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, Waterfront Boxing, I think it was called. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. And last but not least, you'll want a house. The winner! <laughs> you want me to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Ah. Uh, Two-faced. I was really hurt by Ioana. We we were friends, and uh, I never said anything ill about her. And I was unaware that she was saying really mean things about me. And it really hurt me when I mm -hmm. saw the footage of her talking badly about me. And I was really surprised because I thought, maybe naively, that that everyone on in that house was a friend. So I felt very betrayed by her. To her credit, she wrote mm -hmm. me a letter of apology. She probably oh, doesn't even remember doing that. I guarantee oh, if anyone asks her about it, she'll not know. But before the season aired, she sent me a letter and she, she apologized. She said, mm -hmm. I want you to know that you're probably gonna see some stuff um, in the edits if it comes out and I'm sorry. And um, it hurt me a lot. It made me feel really Thank like faced. Yeah. Um, and beautiful. She's beautiful. So, okay. Well, Mercedes, before you jump in, April, like, have you guys, cause of course, this happened many, many years ago. Many. Have you guys, like, talked since then, reconciled since then, laughed about it since then? Um, there's certainly no uh, tension and uh -huh. no bad feelings. I don't think there was a reconciliation to happen because there was no fight. Do you know what I mean? Gotcha. I feel like people reconcile when there's a tension or an argument. Mm -hmm. She apologized, and I and I feel like that's all the reconciliation I needed. But um, of course, and I have and I've worked with her a couple times since then, just mm -hmm. like you know, top model related projects and um, cordial, completely cordial. Um, but but you know, we don't have a friendship or a closeness, not because of that. Gotcha. Just um, you know. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. it is it is what it is. And it's, you know, I, I'm not saying we'd have a friendship if that didn't happen either. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that was sort of my lasting impression. And it it was, it um it hurt, yeah. <laughs> Miss Mercedes? Oh, yeah, Joanna was, uh, she was a classic beauty. And uh, she, you know, she came from a very, wealthy background i mm -hmm. like i learned a lot about her i didn't even know about soy milk at the time <laughs> now it's everywhere mm -hmm. but um i would also say she was advantageous and mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i remember her telling me in the car she's like just wanna uh you know after this i want to just marry rich have a baby and that's it and she did it. She said that back then. <laughs> I was just about to say, she said that back then, because that's definitely what she is now. Yeah. Yep. I never and, knew she said that. Uh, yep. Cool. And I just remember her having us. And, we, you know, we had a closer relationship yeah, towards the end house. because we were the two finalists. And mm -hmm. um, you, guys, you guys were close, like, I feel like throughout the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. She was never ill to me in any way. You know, she just, she knew a lot about the industry and 
I don't know. And she had, um, I don't know. She had an evolution being on the mm -hmm. show, but yeah, no hard feelings. So out of all the girls I've gone live with, I probably talked to her like amongst the freaking ones. That Yolanda House is funny as hell. She is <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, she's really funny. She is no, she, she is funny, and she like she's like. I can see her like a little god mommy. Like she'll be like, I'm praying for you, or God told me this about you, and I just want to let you know. And like it comes at the most unexpected, but like mostly the time. So shout yeah, out to you wanna help. And it's funny because she did that on the show too. She mm -hmm. had her psychic oh. abilities and we would talk about that. And I said I had that too. Um and a lot of people don't know, but she was a Mexican American. She never talked. We talked about, about her. that on our on our chat. Oh, she did. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't see. Um, they, they talked. On that to, one. Didn't they talk about that on the show? No, I thought. I thought. I it don't was, remember. No. no. Or May, maybe like grazed over, but grazed not. over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was. I feel like we jokingly called her grandma because she had an older soul spirit mm -hmm. than the rest of us, and she definitely had like, if there was a house mama, it was her. Like yeah. she was like, all she right, just seemed so wise nice. beyond her years. Yeah, like and and kind of like we were like, not not in a bad way, but like we were the children. Like she's like, all right, let's everyone pull it together. Like she mm -hmm. had that, that older caretaker spirit. So Mercedes, you said you have not seen my live chat with her. I haven't. Mercedes, you got to get up on it. But what about you, April? I saw a part of it. I watched all of Shandy's mm -hmm. and I watched Nigel's and, and then I got interrupted. I did try to watch part of Joanna's. I saw the very beginning. Gotcha, gotcha. Joanna's just so funny to me. Like she's so grand and like when she's holding her hand and she's talking, I don't know. I she's, just well, think I she's did, a, okay, I lied. She's I did funny see the to me. Beginning. I did see the beginning of it, but I didn't mm -hmm. see the full chat and I realized her accent is very different now than what it used to be. Oh, really? She's more Southern. Oh. I always thought she sounded a little British. <laughs> he did on the show. Like, like Madonna? Then she, yes. Yes. Like Madonna. she adapts. She adapts to where she is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's top model roll call. That was so amazing. You girls did great. Thank Yay. So now we're going to get into a couple of fan questions. Um, for you girls, are you ready? I think so. Okay. So Double Tall Steve is asking, in the episode with the psychic, Mercedes, you said later in your interview you were amazed how she was coming up with those things with just your name, birthday, and numbers. Did it ever occur to you that producers might have whispered certain parts of your Antium story thus far in her ear before that quote-unquote psychic reading to get a rise out of you? Oh, my God. I am so glad you asked this because mm -hmm. out of nowhere, I recently reached out to that psychic. And she had done a reading on me after Top Model, and I told April about this. We and just talked about it last week. At we just talked about it. So it's just so weird that it's in the universe, but there are no coincidences. She told me that the producer had just sent her in with no information. Oh! And, and she would have never have lied about this. It's not uh -huh. advantageous. It, it doesn't benefit her. So... She didn't know any of us, and she said she actually felt bad that she um, was saying that something was wrong inside of me mm -hmm. um, because she wouldn't have. She didn't know I had lupus at the time, and mm -hmm. it, I didn't come out to the girls, and she wouldn't have done that if she knew as a psychic mm -hmm. in front of all those people. So that was really interesting. So to answer that question, she had no information at all, and I can verify that because I just talked to her. And she's an amazing individual, Susan Galland. Okay, well, thank yeah. you for that. Wowzers. Because I just knew you was about to say, yeah, she said they told me. No. Now, but she actually discerned all of that. Yes, and I have to say, like, I have never, I, like, don't reach out to psychics at all because mm -hmm. I feel like everything is here and God or whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. But um, she did a reading and she did my grandmother's voice and I almost lost my mind because I even forgot what she sounded like. My grandmother had passed away. She's more than just a psychic. She's a medium. And she said things to me that no one knows or anything. That woman is the real deal. And she's done stuff with Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop. And yeah, so, you know, you never know when you're watching reality TV, what is real, what is not. But mm -hmm. my verification is she's the real deal. 
Okay. All right. On to the next question. This is Let's Talk Film. What was the most difficult shoot for both of you guys to do? And which one is your favorite? And they also want to add, is it true that the underwater photo shoot originally was going to have a shark? Yes. And tell oh, them no. why, April. Or... So, 100% yes. They were trying to put a shark in the tank. They weirdly called the house like a couple days before <laughs> and asked every girl to come to the phone. We said this on the E! True Hollywood story, too. And mm -hmm. asked us if we were on our period. And we were like, what the heck? This is really invasive. But they asked all of us if, if we were on our period. And then someone on production told me after the fact, um, because so many of us were on our cycle, they could not have the shark. But if we weren't, they were absolutely going to drop a shark in that tank. Yeah. And just to be clear, that would have never, we would have freaking gotten eaten because <laughs> that, that was so dumb of them even thinking that because the constant of action of people coming in, that shark, unless it was like a nurse shark, would have gotten so irritated by us. But they would have loved us to get eaten because we all signed a contract that said- Giving yes, her life away. You could put me in a shark tank and kill me and <laughs> I can't do anything about it. And what a spoiler for the for that episode. They probably would have loved us to get eaten. Yikes. <laughs> it's so funny that you guys confirmed the story. This is my first time hearing it. I just went to the Georgia Aquarium here in Atlanta for my birthday. Oh, it's um, great, isn't it? Yes, I was so like enamored with just how they designed it and I feel like I'm immersed around it. It was like, oh my God, but I went to the shark exhibit and I was like, no. To find out that if you pay $300 to those people, they will allow you to swim with the sharks. And my boyfriend was like, I almost bought you one. I was like, baby, <laughs> hey, loss of money. I'm sorry. Well, next time uh, April and I are in Atlanta, we'll recreate that. Maybe you could be our photographer. Yes. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. Okay because it's almost four o'clock. I need to hurry up through these. So Ishikari is asking, ask them if they knew Shandy was having sex at the moment during the party. Okay, so in our chat, just to give context, just to give context, Miss Shandy did say, hey, 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 yay, 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 as we lay Shirley Murdoch. The question then goes on to say, how coincidental is the fact they got alcohol when the Italian guys were coming over? So if you want to answer that or even just speak about the moments that we did not see or the moments that you guys did see during that night in Italy? In the moment, I was not in the room. I did not know, personally. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it was pretty uh, intentional that there was lots of alcohol and male models brought to the house, for sure. April said it all. OK. <laughs> Next. So Desmond Gatling wants to know, throughout the seasons, the judges kept bringing up the fact that Mercedes was too commercial. And towards the end, they mentioned that April was too technical. I remember this. That kind of got on my nerves. Um, did y'all feel that these critiques were valid? Or did it seem like the judges, sorry, or did it seem like the judges struggled to deliver constructive feedback? And did their comments affect the way that you approach future projects? Um. I think that the judges failed with constructive criticism because okay. they're like, do this, and then you do that, and they're like, no, that's wrong. And you're like, oh, you feel like a puppet. Like, which way should I go instead of just doing me? Um, if I knew then what I know now, commercials are where it's at. Like, I've made a career off of it. I've made good money off of it. Um, modeling unless you're modeling all the time and you're a Gigi Hadid, you don't mm -hmm. really make money. And if I knew that they were commercial, if I knew if commercial was a good thing, I would have been like, yeah, I'm commercial, put me in a commercial, but I didn't know. And, um, and I agree, I have more of a commercial look, even till this day. I am not super chiseled and, you know, have the faccia like Joanna house and I'm okay with that. Like I've made a, a life off of commercials. April? I agree. I, I do think a lot of times it's like the judges struggle with two things, with trying to create a story for all of us, mm -hmm. which can either be the story that means this is why they should win, or if you're anyone but the winner, your story is the reason why you didn't win, right? So like for Mercedes, it's like, okay, if, if she's not going to win, we need to plug in a reason. So let's just put the through line that she's too commercial. So it makes sense. 
Um, does it mean she's not commercial? No. I'd say the same for me. Okay, if April doesn't win, what's like the through line that we can put in? Oh, she's too tough. Gotcha. Was I sometimes in my head and over analytical? Absolutely. But I think if Mercedes won or if I won, they would have not told those stories. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. No, that, make, that makes sense. That makes complete, complete sense to me, which I'm going to segue right fast, Mercedes. And I'm going to open up by saying, I connected with you when I was little because my family has a very long history of lupus. My um, my mom has lupus. My her all of her sisters have it. Her dad had it, and some of my female cousins had it. So when I heard that you had it on the show, it was like, oh, like she has the same thing my mom had at the time. I was like maybe six or seven, something like that. Oh wow, six or seven? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I had, bit, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I had a little age moment there. So let me go get my cane. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so of course, with you being this love character on the show, and naturally you talking about your experiences with lupus, of course you're gonna be like a almost like an un, a unspoken spokesperson for it. You know, like talking about your experiences with experiences with it, being a face of someone living with it. With that just being said, with what one of you guys said about them deliberately putting things in the in the edit so that it makes sense, do you feel like they showed that too much or um, exploited that story a little bit? So I'll go first since we were talking about lupus, and I hope that your family's okay. Um, I still live with lupus. Um, mm -hmm. They in the contract it specifically said that we could not have any disease or illnesses so i lied about it because i had just been diagnosed and my grandmother had it so i have a history of it and um i was withholding a lot for a, a while because i didn't want to get mm -hmm. kicked off the show um so i think once the once they figured it out and they're like okay we we have her maybe she's a fan favorite i don't know how it works in production they kept it and then if you pay attention to all the other seasons there was almost like a sick girl or had some type of thing after that because they realized oh it's giving a platform to people it's people are understanding mm -hmm. you know stuff so I didn't, I didn't feel exploited at all, but I did feel that they were pushing me to come out that I had it. And that was the interview with Janice. I don't know how you felt, April. I, I think that they do, I mean, I know actually, I've had conversations <laughs> with directors from the show. They very much are producing a show in which each of us have a story. Yeah. And once they decide what that story is, it is a million different editing assistants job to scour through hours of footage and find any footage that supports that story. Um, hmm. That's what reality television is, right? That's why yeah. we watch The Bachelor. Like, yeah. she's the bitch. She's the one who needs love. Da, da, da. Totally. And my, this is a little big spill of the tea. Uh, towards, the, towards the middle end of the competition, I was pretty good friends with one of the directors. I won't say his name because I don't want him to get in trouble. But he, he pulled me aside while we were doing our production interviews at the hotel. And he was like, April, let me talk to you. And I was like, what? What's up? And he said, we cannot find a story for you. He's like, you're from Miami Beach. You dress all flashy, but you're a college grad business girl. Like, sometimes you're funny and other times you're really serious. Like, we just don't know where to put you. Can you help me? And I was like, I, I didn't know how to answer that question. I was so green. I didn't think about stuff like that back then and who am I and all that. So I, I gave him nothing. And ultimately, he said, okay, we decided to go with business college grad serious like intellectual girl um and so then you find all the footage to support it that doesn't mean it's not there um but i think that's how the editing works it's it's about as fair as like filming a couple for a year and then putting together a reel of all their fights and saying here's their relationship right yeah so it's and it's 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 you they use what you give them but it's very much storytelling through editing and i knew that going into the audition process mm -hmm. right because we before that was real world that was like the reality mm -hmm. television and i was like i need a story right um i wish i knew <laughs> from new jersey you know mm -hmm. which i was and i and it nobody would believe that i had this tough background with this like commercial face Pretty or whatever face. so 
you know, you, you give them what you can and then you work off of that. Just anyone applying for any reality TV shows, have your story. You you were way more savvy than I was. I ne it didn't even enter my mind to have a story. Never. And to add on to what Mercedes just said, um, as you guys know or may not know, I live in Atlanta. I'm on a reality TV show coming out in March. But a lot of my clientele that I have are reality TV stars that live here in Atlanta. And one of them, I, I know she doesn't mind me saying this because I've heard her say this publicly, Dr. Heavenly, who's on Married to Medicine on Bravo, she says all the time, she says, I go on that show and I do things purposefully so they don't come try to find a story about me. She says, like, I... I give them a story so they don't have to come find a story. So just wanted to add that to Mercedes' little nugget yeah. about for you guys watching that just may be interested in um, reality TV. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on your show. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to tune in. Yikes. I'm going, I'm, I'm like <laughs> biting my nails. I'm so nervous. To, I'm just nervous to see what they're going to do with the whole shebangy langy langy. I get it. Yes, anxiety is through the roof, but we'll get through it. Okay, Stefan wants to know, I always felt like you kind of started crap between Yoana and Camille regarding Camille commit, um, commenting on Yoana leaving during dinner. Mercedes, this is for you. Oh, it's for me? Uh-huh, for you. I'll say it again. I always felt like you kind of started crap between Yoana and Camille regarding Camille commenting on Yoana leaving during dinner. Of course, this is the whole eating disorder. Snafu, do you care to comment on this? I just uh, like I wish I had April for this because I don't remember. Here's what I can here's what I can help with. Help us, April. I'm not saying that I agree with this fan at all. I have no recollection, and I do not believe that Mercedes contributed at all. Mm -hmm. I do remember the moment they're talking about. We were in Italy, mm -hmm. in Milan, and we were all having dinner in this like wine cellar. Joanna got up to leave suddenly, mm -hmm. and Camille brought to the table that she thought. Um, Ioana had an eating disorder and then there was sort of a round table discussion about it and it got brought to production's at uh, attention. Mm -hmm. I remember the moment. I do not personally remember Mercedes having anything to do with contributing to the drama or triggering it. But do you remember that night? Not really. Okay. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I was just trying to get through. Yeah. And that wasn't like a big thing. And I don't think I would have thrown her under the bus because we were friends and- You were friends with both of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was, but if I was gonna choose sides, I was gonna be on Joanna's side more yeah. so than Camille. Well, and there, I think the fan wasn't saying that you threw Joanna under the bus. He was saying you like- Initiated it. Put them against each other, which you, they didn't need you to do that. They were already at it. They were already doing That was their huge feud. They did not yeah. like each other. They needed no help in that department. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think you're searching, fan. I think you're searching, but searching, thank you for the question. It. So in my chat with Yoana, she said that what actually was happening was that was her time. I can't remember how she explained it. Go watch it. But she explained that was her time when she would go to the bathroom and call her mother. We had no phones. Well, I, I, I guys in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm watching eyes over here. But she said she would go to like wherever the um the podium was. We didn't like, have a phone in Italy, did we? Oh, like at the restaurants. She said she would call. She, that's when she would talk to her mother at the restaurants. Well, right. I mean, only Joanna can answer that. Yeah. As far as I know, we did not have any access to any phones the whole time. It was like strictly forbidden, and they would have not allowed it. But I can't. I don't. I don't know her actions and whereabouts. Yeah, because we would have to ask to call home, right? Oh, they would have shut that down in a second. Yeah, they want that information. I think I remember her saying she would take her mic off. We weren't allowed to take our mic off. I mean, we could take our mic off if if we if were in sleeping. Right. Yeah. But. Well, I guess I guess in her in her rendition of it, it's her going to the bathroom, so they're not going to bother her in the bathroom, and that's when she would do the the spy kid operations. I mean, I guess we just didn't know about. I I'm not. I don't. Know. I guess we weren't as savvy as. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Louise wants to know, Mercedes, you haven't mentioned in another live that Jan is coming to you basically letting you know that you would not win. I watched this and I was gagged myself. I was like, oh crap, she already knew. Can you tell us more about this encounter? If there's anything additional you want to add. Yeah, we were in Italy. We had downtime before mm -hmm. the elimination. 
and Janice said, you're always my favorite. I'm obvious, you know, she was a Polish model way back in the day and she felt the same story I had. And she said, Tyra's an idiot. <laughs> I don't know why she's going with her, da, 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 da. And she said, I uh, come, my hairstylist is gonna make your hair straight and you're gonna look beautiful for your exit. And and I was like, are you sure she said that? And she's like, yes, I know. And you know, and I was like, okay, thanks. Thanks, Janice. And I hung out with her after the show as well. Um, she was she was crazy, but she was definitely my savior on the show. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm verifying that that happened. Okay. Oh, okay. I think what's interesting about that, because Mercedes talked about it on our IG Live for Throwback Thursday time, is even though that happened, she still wasn't sure until the final moment whether it was all an additional dramatic ploy to mess with her head. Mm -hmm. So it, it increased the drama of her living. Anxiety. Yeah, because it's like, wait, are they messing with me? Do they mm -hmm. want so that when I am the winner? And I would have probably thought the same thing. So what a like... Yeah crazy loop yeah to go and and talking about anxiety you said oliver like this is like a new thing something you've dreamed of and it's finally happening and i was just like i went into this meditative state during elimination and i had this song cup and it's uh john hyatt this is like way back in the day and it's called have a little faith in me mm. and it was like oh the heavens were opening and i was like it was like God basically saying, don't worry, everything's going to work out. Like mm -hmm. even knowing that maybe I am the loser and it does, it ends up working out. Uh, fortune favors the bold and you're bold and, you know, don't worry about how anything is going to be perceived because you're a light and that's that that's a reason why you have a platform i was able to have a platform for lupus which was the most important and significant thing i have going on that show mm -hmm. yeah, modeling you know like having having to have a face to something that affects so many people mm -hmm. so whatever that is for you whether it's you know people still suffering from coming out or whatever it is i just had to say that really fast psychic moment <laughs> no i got you i got you so listen i'm over here smiling so the fans know when it i hate technology it gives me anxiety to know and talk, try to talk to y'all look at the chat it's lights and all this that's why i just love going live on my couch because it's relaxed and all the things but one of my surprises just showed up <laughs> one of my surprises just showed up so i'm smiling because she is here and i'm oh gonna God. ask you some more questions and then we'll get through it and then oh merry crazy. christmas happy answer of christmas <laughs> okay so Mercedes had a Janice story. Yoana gave me a Janice story where she was like, um, she was like, Yoana, um, Yoana, Yoana said that Janice bought some shoes or something like that. April, do you have a Janice story? Um, I don't really have a Janice story. I I I never felt like she strongly didn't support me or was super pro April. I I I didn't get to, to be honest. I didn't get to spend that much time with Janice. She cracks me up, um, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have too much one on one with her on the show or after. Okay, okay. Um, moving on to the next question. This is from Melanie Church. April mentioned in an Instagram live with Mercedes that there was a list of contestants that were quote unquote approved by sponsors. She said that Joanna was on that list, but Mercedes was not. Does she remember any other names that were? or were not on that list yes so correction it was mercedes who knew that she told me so now we both okay. know. uh and we did talk about it on our ig live for throwback thursday time mm -hmm. i think we knew then so if you watch it we'll have the list in the footage we're struggling to remember today we were trying we were talking about this earlier like i know it was yoana for sure obviously mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't Mercedes, right? Because that's why you couldn't have won. Um, there were two others. 
I like maybe I, I do think I was on the list and then maybe Sarah, but I could be wrong. Shandy, I, we said it on the IG live, right, Mercedes? Gotcha. Mercedes, oh, what's that? I don't remember. She you doesn't don't remember? remember. <laughs> you have to remember that America's Next Top Model was aired in 2004 mm. and we're in 2021. That is a minute. It. Yeah. A long time ago. Okay. Okay. Um, GH2325-2. Since both of them deserved, deservedly made the top four, do they agree with who they were in the top four with? If not, and they have their way, which of the two girls, which each of them have chosen to be with them in the top uh, four? Duh, April and Mercedes. <laughs> okay. And of course, the top four was Yoana and Shandy. Do you girls agree with you girls being the top four? I think that was, I think that those were the four strongest girls of cycle two. But do you guys disagree? And if you do, who would you have rather to see? I actually agree. I think mm -hmm. those I think those were the four girls. I when I was eliminated, I I thought it was anybody's game. Mm -hmm. I it was a, a tight race. The girls, the last three were so different. Um and I, you know, I can't think of another girl that I think should have been in the top four that wasn't. I think I, I do think that part of the show was pretty spot on. Gotcha. Miss Mercedes? Yeah, I mean, I obviously, I'm in the top two. I agree. I would mm -hmm. love to have seen April, you know, and I, as a, like two ethnic chicks fighting for the top. Um, but yeah, I mean, based on the photos and stuff, yeah, I think it was pretty solid. Okay. Um, those are all the fan questions. Now I'm going to go into my personal questions that I have for you girls. So the first one is, what recent top model tea has shocked you the most? I do chats. Jay has done chats. You girls do podcasts. There's been like, you know, other little lives here and there. Out of all the recent stories that have come out of these um, chats that we're doing about top model, which ones have shocked you the most? Well, just to be clear, it's so sad. I haven't watched a lot of the top models after our mm -hmm. season, just because I'm like, focus on what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. But, um, when I heard about the blackface one, that was pretty crazy. Um, okay. I couldn't believe they did something like that. Um, but that was that was pretty much it. Miss April, I to, to be real, not that much tea that was spilled was that shocking to me because I I think because we were in it <laughs> and behind the scenes. And you're uh -huh. gonna, you're gonna learn this too very soon. The power of editing. We it's like we we are behind the puppet show. Mm -hmm. So we you know the tea that's being spilled. It's, it's kind of like we we had those curtains pulled back by filming and then watching it. So mm -hmm. nothing has really shocked me to be honest. Was this on our season you were asking or any season? So this is in reference to like all of the new top model headlines that have been made recently with. Jay doing his little expose, the expose I have over here about Top Model. If any of the news I like, got to you, which one was like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know that really happened. Or, oh, that was her experience? That. Yeah, it's like nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay. Um, what were your experiences working with production? Production, production, production. Of course, for me doing chats with the girls, there's a lot of stories about, you know, not the most pleasant experiences they have with working with the people who make the show. Do you girls um, have any good or bad experiences working with the producers and all the people who make Top Model? Um, I'll go first. Um, one of the women producers we had was super gracious. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to come out at the time that I had lupus and I wanted to call my doctor. And um, she let me borrow her phone, which was totally illegal at the time. And I think they ended up finding out because I was like going through this pill box and they're like, is she a pill popper? Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, that they showed on the show, but she was super gracious and allowed me to call my doctor because my hair was falling out and it was a big deal and I didn't want to go through that whole experience. So I enjoyed the experience. I 
also was a little bit more savvy when they asked me questions. I wasn't, I knew what they were getting at. So, you know, you create your own story. Um, as far as the camera operator, I'm still friends with her now. She was eight months pregnant and she was about five foot four. And she was so amazing and was there for us. And Frank, who we had talked about on uh, Throwback Thursday time, was very gracious to Shandy when she was going through her thing and didn't want to expose her in that way. Because it's you're breaking the third wall, but you're still a human being, you know, at the end of the day. And reality is very ugly. It's like showing these people going through a process, but then it's so hard to detach as a human being unless you're ruthless. And I really had a great connection with production. It was more about the judges that I was like, ew, you know, more so like Jay Manuel, where I thought we were gonna have more of a connection being mulatto or whatever you wanna call it, mixed. And I felt like not nice vibe from him at all. Like almost like a competition, like when I thought he should be there more for me, but opposites attract, maybe you're more, into people who don't look like you or whatever but that's my my thing in a nutshell okay miss april yeah i had nothing but positive experiences with production and then the 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 coolest thing for me was living in new york right afterwards a handful of times i'd be on the subway and someone would just dart over to my seat and be like hey april you don't know me we've never met but i spent hours editing your footage and you know introduce themselves to me because there's so many editors that work on the show that are still in new york and they were always really heart-centered and emotional like you don't understand like i feel like we've met or i know you because i was telling your story and it was um always really emotional to run into those people that were behind the scenes because I think for them getting, you know, like Mercedes said, they're not allowed to talk to us. And right. I, feel really, I get it. I get why. But for them, I think it feels very like they put all this time. It's like being a surrogate mother that never gets mm -hmm. to talk to their child. Yeah. And so when we would finally accidentally run into them, it was such a great reunion to actually get to put a face to a name and connect with them. And that was that's one of the more positive memories I have about, like, you know, meeting people on production. And I have a quick funny story. Early in my 20s, I was in Vegas and I'm kind of wild. And I was with my girlfriends and I was like, let's go to a strip club. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, look at that limo. Let's go ask where they're going. So we hopped into these guys limo. We didn't mm. know who they were. It was so stupid looking back. Uh -huh. know, Don't do this. But the guy ended up being an editor on Top Model and what? he's at a table and he's like, look, this is going to sound super creepy, but I know everything about you. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and we were at like Spearmint Rhino or whatever mm -hmm. one of those strip clubs are. And it was such a crazy experience because mm -hmm. here's this guy that knows so much about me and edited footage. And then I ended up meeting him at a strip club in Vegas. I um have a similar story too when I talk to like the storyline producers for the show and like they'll mention little things and I'm like, huh, what are you talking about? They're like, oh, I've only watched you for like every day for the last three months. So I, you know, I know every little nook and cranny about you now. So I get exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. My last question that I ask every girl that I do these shots with is, and I'm so excited. I'm so sorry. I'm so excited. Okay, my last question is. If you guys were standing for Tyra Banks right now in 2021, April and Mercedes, what would you say? I know. What would you say, April? Come on Throwback Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to have her on our show. We want uh -huh. to reminisce, talk about what went into her choosing us and uh -huh. picking us. Oh, that would be so good. Yes. Oh my God. That would, would be good. Hard. Come on the show, come on the show. <laughs> yeah, I would talk to her about like, what's it like being a mama and a boss yacht and all that of that. She is. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, listen, I have no more questions for you guys. And I told a story for those late, you know, how I need to make up to my top model babies out there because daddy made a oopsie. So I was like, well, I can't get tired of banks because, you know, 
I can't get tired of things. Um, but who can I get to like make it up to them and make this so exciting? I did do some homework before. I got all the people. So without further ado, my first surprise to April and Mercedes oh is. <laughs> oh boy. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm just listening, relishing it, Oliver. Oh no, I'm sure we're gonna hear it. Oh boy. I 100% thought it was Janice Dickinson. So did I. Right? You thought it was Janice? I, oh no. I'm I not thought it that was good. Janice. Because you kept talking about Janice and asking if I had a personal story with That's her. That's a sign of a good host. <sighs> yes. You did a bait and switch. Yolanda, sure. hello. Hi, Yolanda. Hi, guys. I was listening to you. You guys are so good together. Good chemistry. Thank Thanks. you. You should come on our show. Well, send me an invite. I never, we never really spoke a lot after the show, but um, I just, I do want to say that you guys were pioneering for ethnicity. And just to let you know, my mom was Mexican and I grew up in a multinational household and my father's Canadian. I speak fluent Spanish. So I know I don't look maybe typical to what uh, Americans would think is Mexican, but I am a full blooded Mexican lady mixed with American and um so yeah so so let's 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 go on this sh chat via Mexico I, let's go get a margarita I do remember that about you and I I thought the top model also I in my memory maybe I'm wrong I thought that the show did highlight that and did present you as a Mexican American I think I think it that. did but I think I think after people were kind of thought well you know you want to well, I don't know the reasoning why they may have chosen me and that I wasn't ethnic enough or I wasn't different enough. But my mother was uh, from Mexico City. She was blonde hair, hazel eyes. Um, so so that's that's something that I just definitely want to get out there that I am. I don't hide from my background. I embrace my heritage. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Hi, Yolanda. Hey, Oliver. <laughs> I just want to address an elephant in the room if I can, because I'm not, I'm like, I just, I, I'm a direct person. And Joanna, I don't know if you heard the whole interview or not. I didn't hear all of it, no. Okay, so I did, and I did just want to directly speak to you. I did say that I was a little hurt by some of the things that you had said about me during our season, because I thought we were friends and I wasn't aware of the, the sort of behind the scenes like negativity but i also remember that you wrote me a letter of apology and that that's all in the past so i can you like i don't remember what i said and that was so long ago and mind you i think a lot of you know looking back there we were pretty green and immature and, and i never had any intent to be hurtful or say anything but you know i think you're throwing us into a room with different personalities and competition it's going to make anyone feel uncomfortable but um, I don't remember in particular, like, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I don't think you were ever a target on my mind, somebody that I wanted to uh, um, make feel a certain way or hurt. I'm sure, I'm sure you don't. It was so long ago. And so I just didn't want to have spoken about it and then have you here and not tell you. Obviously, that was a million years ago. We've worked together since then. There's no animosity between us. I just didn't mm -hmm. want that to have been said and then me not to tell you face to face that, that I well, I, I need to know what it was because I really don't remember. Yeah, I mean, all you have to do is watch to see it, but um, it doesn't matter. Oh, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it since. It, I never, I watched it maybe one episode in, but I never watched exactly what you're making a reference to. Yeah, neither of Mercedes and I. It doesn't matter now. It was a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. I was just a little hurt and that's all I wanted. I just wanted to make sure I told you that to your face so that that it doesn't look like I said it, and then now you're here and we're ignoring it, that's all. And it was a million years oh, ago. Well, I wish you would happen. remember what it was so I could know, because then I can grow from it. How can you learn and grow if you don't know why the other person was offended? Okay. I, just um, don't, I don't think we have enough time for that. Yeah, I was about to say, you want it. I just brought, I just, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I don't do know what's know. going on. I don't remember as, anything. Well, as everyone knows, I never, um, I never know what, what everyone's gonna say. So I had actually, I was like, you wanna, 
I was like, are you cool with April Mercedes? She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen him in years. It'll be great to say hi to him and whatever. So this is just me bringing her in to say hello. I know the girls that watch love to see the girls interact. So hopefully, and of course, you guys just said you guys would do like your own chat on Throwback Thursdays. I'm going to watch. Everyone's going to watch. But I just we wanted to bring you on a bond. Yes, I just wanted to bring you on a bond because she was like, she hasn't seen you girls in so long and she would love to We don't know where you are. Been up to. We don't know how to reach you, where to find you. <laughs> I want to go look at her. That is so funny. Just DM, DM through Instagram. Sounds good. We will. You look great, by the way. Thank you. Sunny. Yo, Wanna, thank you so yes. much for agreeing to do. Did, did you want to stay for the next surprise, or did, or did you have to go? I, I, I want to see. I want to see her too. I want to see her. Oh, Wait, okay, her? Well, my next surprise to you in um Mercedes in April. No, stop I, it. <laughs> is Shandy. Hello, Shandy. Hi, Shandy. Hi, Shandy. I'm sweaty. Oh. <laughs> what are you wearing? Oh, hold on, hold on a second. Ah. Shandy, okay. what are you doing? Woo. All right, hi, babies. <laughs> hi, babies. <laughs> You are so funny. Oh my god. I'm so wedding. Okay, sorry. What, what are you wearing? Did you think this was an in-person interview? With I was out I was outside. I forgot what time it was. Oh my god. You're in New York where it's freezing, right? Yeah, it's so cold. It's so cold. I just got back in the house. I was like, oh crap. Hi. Hey Shandy. Hey. Hi. Hi, you wanna? Hi. <laughs> What is you up, two, guys? Have you two seen each other at all? Or spoken at all? Shandy and your No, wife? not at all. Not, this is your first time? Oh, wow. Yeah, hi. Hi. What is from the past? This was my surprise to you girls. I thought it would be so amazing to reunite you with your friends. <laughs> That Wait, is are you so gonna funny. bring like Janasha and CMR in? Oh now, no, right now? there's no one else. No, that no, would be so no. funny. It's like the whole cast is here. Listen, this whole time <laughs> I've been talking to you, um, April and Mercedes. My anxiety has been through the roof. Like I'm looking at my phone. I'm texting Yawana. I'm texting Shandy. I'm looking at the backstage. I'm like, oh my god, this is all too much for my little black gay soul today. But <laughs> Oliver, I have Yonka to say, <gasps> I am impressed. Thank you for orchestrating this. It's so nice to see. All these girls that we basically started our career and you know our life with, I really appreciate it. Yay. Television green debuts. Oh my god, you guys, we were, we're roommates. We're ex roommates. That's the part people forget. I think is like we had to learn to live and share a bathroom and yell about plungers and dishes. And yeah, that's and like. like a and Go like ahead. I said before, Joanna taught me about soy milk, and Shandy kicked my ass. <laughs> I have drink oat milk. <laughs> Joanna, I, I can't remember if it was April or Mercedes, but they were, I think it was Mercedes. They said that back in the day, you said that all you wanted to do was marry rich and live a nice, relaxed life. And they're like, we're well, like I, I didn't marry do? rich, but I did get married. <laughs> <laughs> I got married I, to I, a civil rights lawyer, so we're not really rich. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> That's awesome. I always thought you wanted to, I thought you were dead set on being a supermodel. That was my memory. Well, I think at 22, you know, in hindsight, it's so exciting. I think I didn't want to have to suffer through life. I wanted to have a comfortable life. I don't think anyone says, hey, I want to not you know, have nice I things. I want to struggle. But, yeah, I want to <laughs> struggle. No, I think I was living like, I'm going to, I think I was, I think I was, I think I was wishing I could be Stephanie Seymour. No. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I don't wish that anymore, but I think, you know, at 22, I think we have to like, in hindsight, think, you know, we were kind of just in our own little world living in a bubble, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were totally. all so young then, and it's so nice to see you ladies now as grown, yeah. grown ass women. Woo! And Shandy, Shandy, I love, I just want to like applaud you. And I've been watching your Instagram. I love how much attention you're raising for mental health awareness, and you're, you're being so honest and transparent. And I just, I keep like, I think it's amazing. Yay, it's important. And a lot of people don't talk about it, and they should. 
Yeah. 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 I just want to say, because I know we don't have a lot of time. We've been on here for an hour and a half, and Shandy and Yoana just agreed to like to pop in and say hi to you guys. Um, because they want to say hi to you girls. Um, but <laughs> while we're all for here, I just want to say thank you to the to the four of you and your entire cast, and of course all the girls who did top model like. People like me still look up to you girls and it's so um, amazing to share these spaces with you girls and to have you girls bless my life and bless the girls who watch, the girls and girls who watch with all the top model team that we love. And so amazing to see what you girls have become, you know, become and grown into. And thank you guys again. Do you guys want to say you. Shandy and Joanna since you are the latest guest? And I do want to close out with April and Mercedes. Is there anything you want to say before I let you go? And hopefully... You girls would go over there to Throwback Thursdays with April and all the babies. Yeah, that's so cool. Top model tea for us. <laughs> it's just cool to see everybody, and it's cool to see Shandy. And um, yeah, it's just like a, a memory. And I always remember, like, you know, it's a special part of my life, and I'm sure you guys as well. And so I was just grateful for the opportunity. And so, yeah. Uh oh, did uh -oh. we lose April? April! <laughs> <laughs> what happened? She's like, peace. She's like, peace out. <laughs> no, maybe her phone died. Maybe her phone I died. Think, I think so. Mine's almost going to die. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, okay. I just want to say thank you, Oliver. You're like the sweetest. And I'm so happy to be your friend now. And um, for kind of giving us our voice again about this. You know, it was a very crazy time in our lives and has affected us, you know, this forever. So, we appreciate you, and you're the sweetest. And here comes April. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi. I don't know what happened. And I wasn't trying to thank you. <laughs> yeah, but just thank you, Oliver, and happy birthday again. Oh no, thank you. And again, thank you, Shandy, and you'll want Thanks, for guys. participating in my craziness and making this surprise possible for Mercedes and April. I love All you right, guys. take care. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye, you wanna. Bye, Shandy. Yeah. Did you girls like your surprise? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I wish you would have told us. Well, I then it wouldn't have been a surprise. surprise. I would have been, been like. It wouldn't have been a surprise. Uh, that was a really good surprise, Oliver. And oh. I'm, like, shaking because that was definitely a little bit uncomfortable. And I hate, I hate discomfort. But I think... I think it's all good. I just wasn't expecting I'm so sorry. That. And that's why I went, don't went because. Oh, don't apologize. Because for a split second, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to if I want to do it. Because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm finding out everything. But I asked her, it was like, you know, is everything okay with you girls and whatever? She's like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen them and in a long is. time. And then. Yes. And everything is okay. And it's fine. Good, that was good, like good. real. That was real TV moment right there. <laughs> You can't write that stuff. Good for you. Can't you can't write it. You can't write it. And so I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you'll watch it back. But when you started talking, I was like, oh my God. Here, Eddie, you're trying to be a hero and you're trying to be iconic. And then here, <laughs> here it goes. Here it goes. But I'm glad that you stated, you know, it was in the past. And you girls had a pleasant interaction. And she's coming over there to talk to you girls about top model stuff. So of course. God is good. Yes. Well, listen, I don't have any more questions for you. I think for all energy spent out after all of that, I want to thank you girls so freaking much for coming to do this with me and sharing this space with me. You two girls are part of a franchise I look up to and to share this opportunity with you means, means a lot, a lot, a lot to me. And I will never, ever forget it. Well, this has been fun. Thank you so much for having us on. I wish you nothing but success in your future endeavors and you know, America's Next Top Model, I got a best friend out of it, and we're always happy to share our experience, and um, we love that we still have fans and that they uh, follow us, and we're able to uh, learn and grow from them as well. Yeah. Is we're there anything, anything you guys want to plug in before you go? Yeah. Um, just continue to watch Throwback Thursday time on our Instagram or YouTube. Um, we're constantly having uh, new guests on. We're starting a new year. And, um, you know, I just, I've been doing the acting and modeling thing as well as sales because, you know, you got to have that side hustle until you mm -hmm. have a TV show mm -hmm. like Oliver. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just, you know, for people who are in, inspiring to be an actor or a model, keep doing you and know that um, you'll get there and 
it may take a while, but if that's what you really want, continue to pursue your dreams. And Ms. thank April. you. Thank you so much for having us on, Oliver. Like Mercedes and I, when, the whole thing that we put behind Throwback Thursday times and what we both love and appreciate, appreciate about you is everything is energy. And a lot of people out there who want to like, you know, spill the tea or talk about reality TV shows, they can do it in like a, a more negative energy or a catty place. And you do it from this place of love and light and just genuine joy for the show. And that's what we love about your show. And it's it's something that we look up to and that we aspire to do on Throwback Thursday time. So thank you for that and for having us on. It's it's just really fun to watch you and to be- Yeah, thank you for being authentic. Yeah, which is real. So hard to find. Yes. No, well, thank you, thank you. And I will say, thank you guys for, for sharing that with me. I would definitely say, the way you girls run your business, and let me tell y'all out there, they said, Oliver, make sure you email us, send us this, send us that. And it was like, you know, I had to be more official, which is totally fine. But seeing how you girls run your situation over there, and I've watched all of your podcasts. I love the layout. I love the format. Aww. It's definitely inspired me that I need to step my little game up over here and, you know, make the whole experience a whole lot more official in this thing of a jig. I think what you're doing is great, and I can't wa wait to watch the other seasons. And thanks a lot. No, thank you, yeah. girls. Thank you, girls, so much. You girls enjoy the rest of your day. Everyone, please send Mercedes in April positive vibes, claps, hugs, kisses as they leave from doing an amazing cycle to amazing cycle to, excuse me, live chat with the nerd. Be sure to go follow them on all of their socials and support their show, Throwback Thursdays, down to the internet, okay? Love you okay. girls so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Let's remove one and let's remove two. Listen, y'all, we got through it. <laughs> ah! My name is Oliver Twix, your nerdbird cutie, reporting for duty here to do Lord's work once again. And I think I, I think I did it today. Listen, thank you guys for your support. I love you guys. I'm going to get off. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. Be sure to do the same in your little world. Be safe out there. The coronavirus thing is getting a little itchy, sniffy, witchy. I've been reading and some things and things make me nervous. So just make sure you guys are out there being safe. You're taking care of yourself. You're doing the things that your government and your medical people are telling you to do because it's getting real. It's getting real. It's getting real. And I um, just want the best for all of us. I love you guys. And until next time, be sure to pray. <laughs>